is at 11.30 a.m. here in the sanctuary. The parents of the junior and senior high student of the CKPC, as well as all members of St. Giles, have all been invited to worship together today as one body in crisis. CKPC has also extended an invitation to join them at 4 p.m. today at their building for service to induct three new elders, including the new liaison elder between CKPC and St. Giles. The folk night was great success this week with acting and folk song, musical theater, and the rock numbers, country, and even Beyonce numbers. Thank you very much to Shannon and Emmett, and as well as Jason, Toby, and everyone who contribute their time, talent, and money. This coming week, In From the Cold is happening on Thursday. Please contact Susan Carmichael with any question or to volunteer. We encourage you to reach out to Susan for this wonderful ministry. And we are still looking for the volunteer for the Stampede Breakfast. Please contact Reverend Rod if you are interested in helping or organizing the event. He will return next week. Next week for worship, there will be extra music in the service and extra focus on the worshiping God through music. It is summer choir wrap-up service, which is always wonderful and joyful. Please join us in person if you can for this special music day. After the musical service, there will be a new Bible study starting at 11.30 in the garden. Hopefully no rain. It will be ongoing throughout summertime, and we really encourage you to join us. Bring a back lunch and bring a lawn chair and join Chandra for a close look at the rectory passage. This is a drop in Bible study group. We are inviting CKPC, member of other church and community at large to join us also. No registration is required, and we encourage everyone to attend as they feel so moved by the Spirit. A quick note, the Wayne will be away on holidays. For the next two weeks. If you need any support that would have normally been addressed to Wayne, please ask Dennis and Shirley until Wayne's back. As you all know, today is a special worship service with number of special guests for National Indigenous Peoples Sunday. There is an extra literature in the uh, copy area regarding the PCC, our confession to indigenous peoples, as well as about truth and reconciliation. We encourage everyone to take another step forward in educating themselves regarding our communal relationship as Presbyterian with our indigenous neighborhoods. We ask all young worshipers remain in sanctuary for worship today. 
Sunday school will resume next week. And finally, we would like to welcome good friends of Chandra to the service today. They are spiritual readers in the traditional black food teaching of creator and creation. Thank you, Nick Many Fingers and Natasha Scott from the P. P. Kenny Nation of Blackfoot Confederacy for traveling to Calgary today to be with us. We welcome your prayer and your song. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for being here. On June 9, 1994, the Presbyterian Church in Canada confessed that we presumed to know better than Indigenous people what was needed for life. One of those needs was land. And in collaboration with the stated policy of the Government of Canada, we participated in the assimilation of the Indigenous peoples to the dominant culture. Our missionary work condoned moving on to their land without permission, and our silence in the face of the forceful removal of people to government reserves and residential schools condoned the dominant culture's actions. With God's guidance, our church will seek opportunities to walk with Indigenous peoples to find healing and wholeness together as God's people in the aftermath of the actions of assimilation that resulted in genocide. Today we gather in St. Giles' new generation in the gracious and loving presence of God, the maker and the lover of creation. We are called here to worship and work. This is holy ground. And today we acknowledge that we are gathering on the unceded and the traditional lands of the Nitsitapi, the Stony Nakoda, and the Tatina people. Each of these peoples have practices and spiritualities derived from this land, which were needed for a healthy and thriving way of life. We are grateful for the grace of these people who continue to share the Creator's land with the Presbyterian Church in Canada, offering us an undeserved opportunity to demonstrate our love for neighbor. Connie, may I please invite you up to light the Christ candle? In church today, we light the Christ candle as a symbol of the presence of God, alive and moving in this space today. The Christ candle represents light with the sun, light that the sun brought into the world when he was born a baby, God in the flesh. White represents purity, and Christ's perfect nature. This candle represents the work of Christ, our light in the darkness. Please speak aloud in your first language, your mother tongue. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, as Connie lights the candle. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Jenny, may I please invite you for our call to worship? Good morning. I would ask that you join me in the responsive call to worship. Holy and generous is God, the creator of all things. Loving and gracious is Christ, the bearer of healing and hope. Gentle and wise is the Holy Spirit, the breath of new life. Trinity of grace, we call on you today. Come all people and worship the God who has made us and loves us all. We come with repentance, praise, and hopeful hearts. Holy three and ever one. Amen. Our hymn is Numbers.
Please be seated. Creator God, you have created such amazing diversity in humankind through culture and language, custom and community, expressed in so much creativity and compassion. You made them all in your image. You have made a world of such amazing diversity with unique living things we cannot number. We praise you for such wonder. We praise you for in Jesus Christ, you showed how much you love all people, all of creation, and how we can live by your love. By the power of your spirit, please give us new eyes to behold your image in all people. Please let us experience and care for the wonders you have made. Please teach us how to love with humble, grateful hearts. Please join me in our unison Creator God, the diversity in your creation amazes us, but we confess we often prefer what seems familiar. We'd like everyone to speak our language. We wish others held our values and shared our customs. We fail to see how these preferences affect others and the earth itself in harmful ways. We acknowledge the confession of the Presbyterian Church in Canada made in 1994 and confess that there is more to be done on the path of reconciliation and loving our neighbor. Please forgive our easy assumptions. Please help us to be fully with others in humility, acknowledging our arrogance. Please teach us to listen to the stories others tell with openness and curiosity. Please help us to follow a path of healing guided by you, O Lord. Holy Spirit, please purify our bodies, minds, and hearts. Please help us to love others as you have commanded. The Gospel of John reassures us that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and will forgive us when we have missed the mark. He will purify us from all unrighteousness. To all who seek reconciliation with God and with neighbor, in genuine kindness and humility, God offers forgiveness and peace. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Now join me in standing and singing number 309 in your hymnal, God of Many Names. The words will also be on the screen. God of Many Names
everyone can reach for a pew Bible, Marilyn is going to read from the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 1 to 8. It's found on 155 in your pew Bibles, the New Testament, about two-thirds of the way through. Shanda has already done the first part of what I'm supposed to say, so that's good. <laughs> Anyways, if you follow along in your pew Bibles on page 155 or in your own Bible, Romans chapter 5, <clears throat> excuse me, verses 1 to 8. Let the choir get their Bibles. You got Bibles in front of you? <clears throat> says to allow a long pause till everybody gets ready. <clears throat> the reading today comes from the First Nations version of the New Testament. As you read along, you will see some similarities and some differences. Just as when you compare our pew Bibles to the message <clears throat> for example. And like the Message Bible, the Indigenous translation of the New Testament is intended for you to see and hear what you may not have noticed. This is the reading of sacred scripture from the Book of Romans. The good standing we have brings peace with the Great Spirit. This peace comes from trusting in Jesus, the Chosen One, and what He has done for us. Our trust in him opens the way into creator's great kindness and is now the solid ground on which we stand. Now our boasting is in him as we look forward to being the kind of people the great spirit created us to be, a people filled with his beauty and shining greatness. But we must also find joy in our sufferings on his behalf, for we know that when the trail gets rough, we must walk with firm steps to reach the end. As we walk firmly in his footprints, we gain the strength of spirit that we need to stay true to the path. This gives us the help we need to reach the end of the trail with honor. All of this is because of Creator's great love that has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, who is his gift to us from above. When the time was right, when we were still weak human beings, following our bad hearts and broken ways, Jesus died for us. It's not easy to find someone who is willing to die for a good person, even though we might find someone with the courage to die for a very good person. But here is the way the maker of life proves how deep his love is for us. 
Even when we were still following our bad hearts and broken ways, Jesus gave his life for us. Now, please turn in your Bibles to Psalm 100. <clears throat> it's on page 552 of the Pew Bibles. This is a reading of a confession of gratitude from sacred scripture in the book of Psalms. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is the Creator who made us, and we are God's. We are the Creator's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the Lord's gates with thanksgiving and God's sacred places of worship with praise. Give thanks to the Creator. Bless the Lord's name, for the Creator is good. The Lord, Lord's steadfast love and faithfulness to all generations endures forever. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Thanks be to God. Please join me in welcoming Nick and Mom. Give us undivided hearts and attentive minds. Will God help us discern your wisdom in the scriptures so that we may follow Christ, your living word? Please turn again in your Bibles to Matthew 9, verse 35, found on, I believe, it, I believe it's 35 on of the New Testament. We turn about two-thirds of the way through, and it starts again over on page 1. Page 35. Chapter 9, verse 35. Again, you are going to notice a difference. Both are correct. This is the reading of sacred scripture from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus continued to walk about and visit the villages. He taught in their gathering houses, helped people to understand about the Creator's good growth, healed people from every kind of sickness and disease. When he saw the great number of people needing help, he was moved in his spirit with great compassion for them. He knew they were pushed down with no one to help. They were scattered about like sheep without a shepherd to watch over them. So he said to the ones who walked the road with him, There is a great harvest in front of us, but only a few to gather it in. Pray to the great spirit, the chief of the harvest, so he will send out more helpers in the field. Whenever you enter a camp or a village, find an honorable person, will give you lodging. When you come to their dwelling, treat the family with respect. If they are people of honor, your greeting of peace will rest on them. But if no one in that village welcomes you or listens to your message, then go from there and shake the dust from your moccasins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Again, thank you for being here. Nick and Natasha, thank you very much. Peace be with you all. For those of you new to St. Giles today, and I know there's a few of you, welcome. 
Our congregation here consists of many elders. We do a few things here to honor their continued leadership and teaching and presence. One of those things that we do to respect our elders is to honor hearing loss. And so we send out a copy of the sermon so elders can read along with us. But today I'm going to shorten my message. So please, my apologies to those and those online. We're recording again. <laughs> please, my apologies to those online that my sermon will not match my notes today. And feel free to give me a shout. We can talk about anything in it. Some of you are here for the first time, and some of you have been at St. Giles since your youth. Some are young and have never heard these stories before. Some are old and have grown weary of listening. To them. I speak to all of you, everyone here today, everyone who joins us online. I pray you each hear this teaching in your heart. Our shared story begins thousands of years ago with a journey. Our father Abraham left his homeland, left with his family. And while they were settled in a new land, God called him to embark on a bigger journey. God told him to leave his father's settlement. God promised that all the families of the earth would be blessed. Before there were Christians, we were all Jewish. We all spoke Hebrew. I think most of us have lost that first language. In the Jewish tradition, Hakarat Hatov, in Hebrew, literally means to recognize the goodness. Nick mentioned that today. It is an attitude required as part of a daily life of honoring God. Think about when you misplace your car keys, but you're grateful for your car. Your children are exhausting. Your parents are exhausting. But you're grateful you have children and parents. Think about when you're suffering at work or at school, but you're grateful for an education or an income. This Jewish practice of gratitude is what Marilyn read to us today in Psalm 100. It's used in all the services, depending on the tradition, so maybe not all, but lots of services, lots of traditions at Passover and at the end of the Sabbath day of rest to start the week with an intention to recognize the goodness. People who followed Abraham, those who married into the family of Abraham, and I am doing a bit of a closed note here. So again, my apologies to the elders. They ended up in Egypt. They ended up being refugees in a land that was not their own, and for 400 years, they went from being treated very well to being treated poorly, until eventually they left the land with Moses. Their tradition, however, requires them to continually recognize the goodness of the Egyptians who hosted them in their land. When they came into a new land 40 years after wandering in the desert, they committed genocide on seven nations, the Jebusites, the Hittites, the Perivites, the Canaanites, the Girgashites, the Amorites. It was a period of horror for those seven nations who suffered trauma at the hands of our ancestors. If you fast forward a little further, after they had lived in that land a long, long time, the Neo-Babylonians came in and did the same thing in return. They committed genocide on all of our ancestors, all of the remaining seven nations, and many, many more peoples besides. If you read in the book of Daniel, you will read of a boy who was taken as a youth, whose family was killed, he was taken to the courts, he was not allowed to practice his language, he was not allowed to 
practice, his traditions, and his culture. It resonates with some of us today. He was, however, Great risk for those who chose to help them to the service. Fast forward another 700 years. Again, my apologies for rushing. The time when Jesus was born, the birth and the death and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, who came to alleviate this suffering. The Romans in that land and people were pushed down there was hardship intense fear and so we heard today in scripture about how Jesus responded to that time he and his 12 buddies his friends the ones that he taught Jesus was only about 30. Chances are the rest of them were younger. These 13 young men, along with a few others, traveled from village to village teaching peace, teaching love and goodness, teaching about God. Did anybody catch in scripture the prayer of Jesus? If you look at your Bibles, many of you have them open. Did any of you hear the prayer at the end of Matthew 9 from Jesus? You can call out. I can see you. <laughs> Did anybody? Does anybody know what it is? He asked his friends to pray. Yesterday, I attended a brand where the cattle were called into the pen to receive medicine marked as belonging to the brand. I observed very few. Many watched, some approved, some disapproved. Admittedly, I am guilty of watching yesterday and not helping. But I couldn't help but think of the prayer. Jesus, like the prayer of the rancher for more help, to care for and steward the land, the beings on the land, human or animal. And that prayer of Jesus for more workers and more help of God. Did anybody catch, if they want to sign up for the job, how to do it in our reading today? at the very end. It's partway through Matthew 10. There's an honorable way to share blessings. We're to find another honorable person to go out. One who will invite us into their home when we're traveling. It's the start of right relationship. We're to greet their family with respect. Offer them a blessing of peace. If the people choose not to receive that peace, we cannot force it on people. There is no such thing as force of peace. It's a gift. And the one being offered the gift has the continual choice to receive it or reject it. We are just the messenger. 
We are the one who brings the gift. We are not the judge. What if Jesus is spending, sending another message? What if Jesus is working in their heart in ways that we can't possibly know? And we do more than offer peace and love. If we're rejected, we're going to shake off the dust. Paul. Marilyn read from us today, the man who understood this place. Many of us have heard these stories about a man who killed all the Christians, a man who felt he was protecting God, a man who was actually deeply faithful. He worshipped properly, or at least he thought he did. When Jesus gave him ears to hear and opened his eyes, When Paul repented and Jesus forgave him, he became a worker to deliver a message of peace. He went from town to town, and our our reading from Romans says it's going to get hard. Not it might. He taught to just keep moving to keep sharing the message, to keep loving, and to keep being peaceful. Regardless of how we are treated, we are to keep blessing others. When you fast forward to 2,000 years of Christianity, you can see that many of our Christian forefathers were as lost as our Jewish ancestors. They didn't understand how to bring a message of peace and oftentimes use the word of God to perpetrate harm. There is much more I would like to share with you. I am mindful that we still have a few things to do. If anybody is interested, I'm happy to send you a copy of the teaching today. But I do want to acknowledge that we have all been harmed by the doctrine of discovery. We have all been harmed by teachings that blaspheme, the teachings in Scripture and the peace of God. I'm almost, not just almost, I am hopeful that if Paul can be forgiven, that if he can be a worker in the field, that each of us here can be a worker as well, that we can work with Nick and Natasha. Many, 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 many other neighbors to bring peace and goodness. We can work together to love each other, to walk a good road of no harm, to walk a good road where we pray for each other, where we love one another, where we understand each other's history, and we seek and recognize the goodness in each other. My prayer for each of you today is to receive the peace of God. Share the peace of God. Find strength in God as you endure suffering and to be a light in this world. I pray you find ways to walk with one another in healing and in wholeness and know deeply that we are all loved by the one who made us and gathered us here today. Peace be with you all. Please take a moment, pray, to think about what you've heard from Nick and Natasha, what you've heard from Scripture. Please In the choir, come up and please think and pray while we listen to their anthem in response. I am mindful of the time. 
And I'm actually grateful that we have gone over, but it means we need to all make a few quick adjustments. <laughs> so we are going to we're going to listen to the anthem. While you are praying and listening in front of you, there are pencils. There may or may not be envelopes, but you can fold it up. Please make a note of how you might wish to walk a good road of peace this week with either an action or an intention, a gratitude, a seeking, a recognition, a time, a talent, or a gift of, of money, whatever you feel led by the Spirit to do. At the end of the anthem, Connie will collect the offerings from everyone and bring them to the front. And we will greatly shorten a responsive prayer. We will not do hymn number 740 today. And we will move quickly into the benediction. Thank you for adapting and adjusting with me. Thank you for making your offering. Thank you for seeking and recognizing the good. Thank you for making your intention to contribute to goodness. 
God of grace and God goodness, grace. your world is full of your gifts that sustain our lives. We offer our gifts yeah. in gratitude. Bless them and make them signs of your presence at work in the world, touching lives in need with your love and strength in Jesus. We pray these things in the name of our Lord. Amen. We're going to go through a few slides. The prayers can all be in our heart today, but we're only going to say a couple. God of earth and all its people, in Jesus Christ, you proclaim the good news that true life and peace are found in you. Guide your church to proclaim this good news, his ways that bring Christ's reconciling love to divided communities and people who live divided from others. Please go forward one slide. On this National Indigenous Sunday, we pray for Indigenous communities across this land and all around the world. We thank you for Indigenous leaders who teach and pray and protect and advocate for the people. Bring healing to those who confront painful experiences and build bridges of understanding among us all. God, may Indigenous communities have the resources they need to thrive, and may all the people receive respect for the decisions that they make. Please fast forward. Please fast forward. God of healing and hope, thank you for your faithfulness for us in all situations. We pray for all of those who are ill or in pain, for the anxious and discouraged, for those facing death or the loss of someone dearly beloved, and for those struggling to make ends meet in these uncertain times. We pray for Presbyterian World Service and Development and its partners as they work to bring healing and hope to places of strife and deprivation. We pray specifically for the Pakani Nation, the Kainai Nation, Sitka Nation, the Poundmaker Cree Nation, Onion Lake Cree Nation, the Titina Nation, and the Stony Nakoda Nation. God, you know that we pray for all First Nations in Canada, that they receive answers to their prayers. You know their hearts best, you know their needs best, you know their wounds best, you know their paths best. Please hear their prayers. Please help them feel your love and protection, hope, and healing, goodness, and peace. Let your light shine. Please join me in reading the Lord's Prayer from the version on the screen. O great Spirit, our Father from above, we honor your name as sacred and holy. Bring your good road to us, where the beauty of your ways in the spirit world above is reflected in the earth below. Provide for us day by day all the things we need for each day. Release us from the things we have done wrong. In the same way, release others from the things done wrong to us. Guide us away from the things that tempt us to stray from your good road and set us free from the evil one and his worthless ways. Aho, may it be so. Walk gently on the earth. God has entrusted to us all and cherish God's amazing creation. Deep peace of the running waters to you. Deep, deep, deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of the living earth to you. Deep peace of the shining stars to you. May you travel the road with each other, bringing healing and love light and joy wherever you may go, sharing the peace of the love with all. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you now and forevermore. Amen.